So, my name is Ian Gibbons. I'm very excited to be here in Sweden to do a little poetry performance for you. This poem is called Polydactyly. Polydactyly means having extra fingers. So I'm counting on my fingers and toes and I come up with a number that's different from yours. So I'm working on base 9 or 15 or 18 or 30 and all of the calculations, they're comfortable in my head. So maybe, maybe I hold hidden bones in my arms or maybe not enough or maybe my muscles can extricate, duplicate, replicate my ancestral paths, shim my inheritance into perpetual motion. So tell me, how does it feel to lose your grip as the world around you skittles and slews in the absence of feathers and flight and knowledge of the objects that I possess beguile, sing and spell and sound through vagabond days and moonlit nights. As I extend my reach, articulate my command of pivot point and action and asymmetric flex. So perhaps, perhaps I see more than a dream. Something more than a spectre, fleeing, raveled fantasy and dispute. Something altogether more than escape from compression and ache and incipient airlessness. So perhaps, perhaps this, this is the manufacturer of our own reality, our amalgamation of senses, our body, my body in contact with yours. My touch held aligned with family and friends and everyone who looks on, who watches the spaces between coming and going, spindle and blade, between smoke and wayward spark and ascent. So this, this, this must be memory in flesh, the unwritable, inside and outside, the scattered words we find at our disposal. So these, these, these must be our stories that traverse the earth one by one by one at a time. One by one by one single hand's breath at a time. Yeah, yeah. So this is about an anatomy. I used to be professor of anatomy. I used to teach how the body's made, how it works, how it develops from an egg. And so the underlying science of how you come to have extra fingers is is very interesting and, and the, the part of the rest of this story is that this was inspired by a painting by a New Guinea artist, um, Matthias Kayuga, and this was, poem was written in response to his painting that was part of a special exhibition at the Art Gallery of the University of at Flinders University in South Australia. Yeah. In 1982 we lived in Los Angeles and Los Angeles in 1982 was a pretty wild place. Lots of music, music scene was going crazy, lots of basketball, the, the LA Lakers were at the top of their game at the time. And there was an amazing period of 
big surf, big waves coming down the Pacific Ocean. So this poem is called Vox Pops, LA 82. Blue in Laurel Canyon, we tread lightly around diamondback rattlers before California poppies ignite wildfire, slip landslide, glitter starlit sachet along Sunset Boulevard, a little league fortune removed from roly-poly fish heads, gridlock dementia, 200 backstage blocks past Pico and Sepulveda, with laugh tracks fading out, sweaty credits on a roll, we need to feel the cool, the mentholated rush of kick, snare, hi-hat, a blaze under nicotine moonstain, while we wait for Miles and Ornette and Savanul on the night train to dig the dirt with Boogie Chillin, your hoochie coochie man, the little red rooster, rag in the dozens, sour mash whiskey and fries at 5,000 watts an hour before Hollywood locks down into another Culver City magic mix. And once again, it's the doctor in your home prescribing kindness, joy, love and happiness. Or else, Billy Jean is in the house, on the loose with atomic dog, burning tar, stripping gears, punching automatic rounds through plate glass, low riders, post-nuclear dragon hearts. And she says, I am the one. But this time we are not, because this might be the first Alaskan grey whale, or the last from Baja, because Santa Ana blows photochemical fog across the Pacific Coast Highway and the surf's up huge, pounds million dollar Malibu dreams, shreds to Topanga Reef, double barrows Zuma outside breaks. For sure, for sure, because it's so fucking hot man, it was so fun, like we were so fucking gassed, like our muscles ripped and we toked chilled high five Johnson, the pivot fake past Kareem, pure net. They're everywhere, he says, and I am impressed. And between frijoles, refritos and huevos lancheros, they still go crazy about the way we speak. But shoes no longer matter when tequila turns to gold. When across the Terminator, our day has already counted in. I spend a lot of my time in the ocean and I've been surfing since I was a teenager and these days I spend a lot of my time windsurfing with strong wind, big waves. Whenever it's good we go down and, and go and experience the sea right on the limit of what's survivable sometimes, very strong winds, very big waves. And a couple of years ago I had an incident when I, my gear broke on a day when it was very, very big waves and I was a long way out to sea and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to get back. I did, I lost some of my gear but I got back okay. And then I was thinking, well, you know, being washed in on the beach, covered with sand and seaweed and turned into a fossil and maybe being discovered a hundred million years later, that's not such a bad thing. So this one's called Sedimentary. Relaxed, way out to sea, way out of my depth, unable to touch bottom, reef, bull kelp, urchin spine, I tread water, monitor backwash and rip, listen for dolphin jump, osprey, gulls and pears, catch southern ocean surge, with neither compass nor chart, semaphore nor morse code, 
to count the swill of atmosphere, heart pump, the pressure of fathom on lungs that shudder, quake in hope, remand, slap and rush against wave spray, stringy bark, window frame, lock. Deep under dune drift, shoulders, elbows, subluxed, askew, wrists disjunctured, fingernails long gone. My company, gooseneck barnacles, cuddle bones, great crested turn, inspecting my eyes for death. The meanwhile, however, the nevertheless, when only on a newspaper page, postcard shred, a fisherman's glass float, fray, hook, shout, sun black and blistered, with nothing more to be heard under the load, daytime squall, parries far across displaced rack. One million years, ten, five hundred million, stratigraphy dawning over definition, sight, the slow flood of earth, while I reconsider flightlessness. Birds, crocodiles, sandworms, evaluate flint, jasper, quartz, through carbon cycles, nitrogen, the complex sugars that once caramelised your lips, pursed around how and whistle and roar, sunk almost past line's end until, until gales abate, seek limpid skeletons to release to expose unyielding bedrock. Crime? Oh, okay. Criminals? <laughs> this is <laughs> this one is from a, a longer sequence that was called Noir. Noir as in um, crime movies and crime books. And it's complete fiction. It's, it's all completely made up. So imagine some, a criminal being interviewed by a policeman. And this is the unauthorised transcript. And this is spoken with a strong Australian accent. Which of your shoes do you lace up first? Left? Before right, right before left. Tell us about the buttons on your shirt. Are your handkerchiefs monogrammed, moth holes repaired? When did you begin using herbal shampoo? Tell us about your ties. Describe the patterns, the styles and knots. Show us your cursive script. Just a few lines. A sample signature will suffice. Is that the ink you normally use? The American spelling and your birth certificate? Validated record of entry? Your passport? Tell us about your allergies, your favourite wine, French cheese, organic yoghurt. <laughs> you should monitor your body mass index. How often do you exercise? Can you sing? Play a tenor saxophone? A Fender bass guitar? Can you keep to the beat? 
tell us about last night? Did you hear screeching tyres? A rumbling V8? What about the silence? Why don't you take off your shoes? Loosen your tie. Why don't you sing us a song? So who owns this key? Which door will it open? Simply hold on to it. Simply give us a name. Tell us the time, the place, the motivation. You see, we know about the bloodstains. We know about biochemistry. We will do the forensics. So how about it? Tell us about that cut on your lip. 